So I, I guess I should start and I'll let you go more, but you know, I'm a, a museum of failure. I mean, what you're doing, you're not celebrating failure, you're, you're documenting it, I guess. So we're learning from it. Uh, well, I mean, we have to differentiate failure. So there's bad failure and good failure. The bad failure is because of incompetence, because of insubordinates, it's because of people not following in instructions. So those are the failures that should not be celebrated, not accepted. The type of failures that we celebrate at the Museum of Failure is failure when it's done in the name of progress. So when you're pushing the boundaries of the envelope, testing a new way of doing things, uh, testing out new technology, a new idea. That's when you fail. And that's the type of failure we should be celebrating. Yeah, well, it's like a, a toddler, for example, is going to have to fall down dozens and dozens of times before they learn how to walk. Absolutely. <laughs> but, Absolutely. Uh, they, they learn Absolutely. with each fall. But you, you point out some very interesting ones. Uh, and, and I'm a, of a vintage. I remember some of them. I mean, the new Coke, for example. <laughs> it comes to mind. And people who lived through the 80s remember so much... Uh, uh, celebration of it, I guess you could say, in promotion. And you would think this is one of the Coca Cola was one of the largest corporations on earth at Absolutely. the time. They got to have some of the best and brightest marketing minds out there. And they put out a product that was just a complete flop. <laughs> like, yeah. What I, with, with they, it was in the early 80s. The uh, Pepsi was the underdog. And Pepsi had this brilliant marketing uh, uh, strategy where they would ask people to take, it, it's called Take the Pepsi Challenge. And they would give people little plastic mugs with Coca-Cola and Pepsi and ask them to taste it blindly. People would taste it and go, oh, I like this one better. Voila, it was Pepsi. Now, Coca-Cola was uh, a bit worried about that, that consumers liked Pepsi better. So they did their own research uh, and found out that people actually like Pepsi better than Coke. And so they changed, the, as the story goes, they changed the, the original secret iconic recipe of coca-cola to make it slightly sweeter which is what pepsi is and they called that new coke and it flopped completely because people hated it they hated that that coca-cola would change their beloved recipe or their beloved coca-cola um, it was a total fiasco for coca-cola in the short term but because people were so worried about their favorite classic coke disappearing they hamstered the coke so coke actually sold more than they did otherwise so it's kind of, it's kind of a, one of those weird failures that was somewhat economically successful well yeah i do remember the next thing they came out with rather quickly was coke classic here it is yeah. the classic you can come back to it but exactly it really that's why if you look if you if you look on a can of coke today you'll see that it says coca-cola classic that's because of new coke yeah, and uh, they really pulled in, I guess, their real brand loyalists. So the people who truly did love their Coke, I mean, they were really Absolutely. sticking to it after that. But it was an inadvertent victory, I guess. <laughs> Absolutely. The, the, the executives at Coca-Cola said afterwards, quoted, saying because of the success of the relaunch of Coca-Cola Classic, uh, they said, so they were asked, uh, so did you do, was all this, uh, did you do it on purpose? Like, is it an uh, elaborate, you know, a ploy to a uh, marketing ploy? And then the Coke executives said, we're not that smart. <laughs> <laughs> well, at least they're being honest there. And I know that that one came up uh, kind of recently in, in pop culture. My daughter watched that Stranger Things series. It's set in the 80s, and they, they referenced that. And she was asking me about, like, what, what the heck happened? What was this new Coke thing about? And I had to explain it to her because it was prior to her time. Absolutely. But, uh, I mean, so that's an example of a product from, like, a food product. There's a lot of technology products. Uh, Google Glass. They had wearables that... It totally failed so products from apple we got some weird stuff uh i just uh one of the one of the favorite uh items is a face mask it's a it's a plastic face mask you put on your face and it gives your face electric shocks and the spokesperson for this uh product is what well, was no other than linda evans from the hit show dynasty so it looks like something from a horror film Oh, there you've got it. Uh, all kinds of the, 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 the tech failures. I'm, I, I've tried in the collection to not only have tech stuff, but to have you know, medical failures. We have cars. We have a DeLorean, Ford Etzel. Um, obviously, a lot of tech stuff because that's where most of the innovation is happening. Um, yeah. 
The, the, the Edsel's going back quite a ways, but that, that was named after Ford's son, I believe. Yeah. So um, it be a tribute, but it, it turned out in the worst possible way. Yeah, wait, do you know why it failed? I don't. Yeah, that, I mean, there's multi, it's a, it's a, it was a huge failure. It was like one of the biggest failures in American industry at, at the time. Um, so Ford, they reluctantly innovated because Ford wasn't much for innovation. They can take any color they like as long as they take black. That's yeah. the, the Ford it was innovation. It's standardization, yeah. <laughs> uh, so uh, the Ford Edsel was a huge undertaking for, uh, for Ford. And they, there was a lot of innovation. They, they changed. You could, uh, uh, you, to change gears, you would press buttons in the steering wheel, for example. Um, the, the design was uh, revolutionary and different. But keep, keep that image on the screen there because what ultimately killed it was that they took the grill and they turned it vertical rather than their normal horizontal. And remember, this was in the 50s in the United States. Uh, people commented that they thought that the grill looked like female genitalia. <laughs> and and uh, in no way would they drive by a car like that. So something so innocent or like you, you could never anticipate this uh, turned it into a flop. It wasn't the only reason it flopped, but that was one of the reasons. It flopped. That, that's certainly one I hadn't heard of, but I mean, I guess <laughs> particularly the 50s, the age of the, the muscle cars with the flames yeah. going down that some might be feeling it's a, a phallic substitute, then I, I guess you don't want to see anything that implies <laughs> anything otherwise. It's funny. I, I think it's a funny, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a humorous reason for a multi-million dollar failure. And I imagine the lot was learned from that. I mean, other car companies were clearly watching this very closely. I mean, it's a very competitive market and learn not to at least repeat that mistake. But you, you mentioned the DeLorean, though that was tied to a bunch of, you know, cocaine trafficking scandals with John DeLorean. Oh, you know about the cocaine traf uh, scandals. That was his uh, eccentric personality. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, but that was a different automotive failure. But the DeLorean, um, I mean, the main reason it failed is because it was a crappy car. Mm. Um, but if you look, if you look at a little bit more in detail, uh, the 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 cars were manufactured in Northern Ireland, Ireland, in a ship at a shipyard. Like the 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 workers at the factory had never built a car, so because of tax subsidies and other other reasons, incentives, they decided to build the DeLorean there. And I mean, without with zero experience in the car building industry, there was no way that they could create qual quality cars in that factory. That was one of the major reasons the DeLorean failed. Otherwise, the car looks awesome. I mean, it's super cool. It's, it stood out with that, uh, you know, sort of unpainted uh, stainless yeah, steel. Yeah, and the gulf wing doors that you yeah. open. Like, yeah, it, it's pretty cool. But I mean, so, I mean, some of those, you can see where they tried and they had things. But I mean, as you said, others are sort of those, what were you possibly thinking? Yeah. Like, you know, it yeah. just seems a layperson could even look and say, how did you think that might work? Yeah, that's yeah, look at it and say that's never, ever, ever going to work. We have one called the Jocero. Um, the Jocero is, it was from 2016, 17. Uh, it was, it's a juice press and it's this massive 700 US dollars, uh, a juice press that's connected to the internet, of course, as all juicers should be, right? Um, and they, Silicon Valley loved it because it was such a cool device and you subscribe to a uh, bags of chopped fruit. And so you would, these chopped fruit bags would come home and then you would put them in the, in the, this fantastically over-designed uh, juicer and it would press out the juice. Now, oh, there you go. There it is. It would press the juice out with a huge amount of force to get out all the minerals and all the vitamins and flavors. Well, Silicon Valley went crazy, and then they sold quite a bit of them actually, uh, at seven hundred bucks plus each, like eight to nine bucks a bag. Anyway, in two thousand eighteen, seventeen, eighteen, there Bloomberg News relaunched uh, released a video on YouTube where somebody just takes the bag and squeezes it with their hand, and out comes an entire glass of juice. <laughs> It destroyed the company almost overnight. I mean, why do you need this expensive over design thing when you can just squeeze it with your hand? Um, and it, for me, it's a reminder 
And it's a super, it's a fantastic example of Silicon Valley's ability to create elegant, sophisticated, expensive solutions to problems that do not exist. Yeah, well, and just one more to hit on those. Before I talk maybe a little more about your, your museum itself and the concept, though, and, and getting a bit more contemporary, though, was Google Glass. Like, I, I kind of remember when they were announcing it, it was yeah. coming out. I thought, this sounds kind of interesting. This could be cool. And it's Google. I mean, boy, they got some big minds and money behind yeah. it. But that one, again, was another catastrophe. Yeah. I think it was uh, 2012, 13. I was also excited about it. I, I remember thinking I'd, I'd do anything to get my hands on a Google Glass. But they were quite expensive, and you had to be specially selected to be, whatever, early early uh, 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 consumer uh, of that. The problem with Google Glass was there was there was a lot of problems, but one of the main problems was that it was absolutely useless. There was no there was no use for this awesome technology. It, it was the first real wearable with a screen built into the glasses, voice commands. Um, recording. Uh, it was awesome. But when you don't have any utility, you couldn't do anything with it. So it kind of fell. It failed on that note. Most importantly, uh, it failed because Google didn't appreciate the privacy issues. So I mean, they're basically, they're basically a spy device connected to the to internet. And pe people, I mean, it looks awesome. And the technology is awesome. But Google totally underestimated how people would react to the privacy issues. And in fact, there were signs outside of cafes in, in, in San Francisco. It would say, uh, no dogs you know, can enter. And then it also have no glass holes. That's what people that use Google Glass were called, glass holes. Um, not so cool. Google totally uh, failed on this one. Yet, ironically, you know, a few year, years later, I mean, people realized that a person could be holding up their phone and, and recording or taking pictures at any time. And I think people have just learned to get more guarded with what they're yeah. doing. Yeah, exactly. I don't, know if the, I don't know if the privacy issues would be as much of a problem today because today it's either Apple or Google that owns all your data. So you, you don't really have a choice anymore. But at the time in 2013, it was a real concern. Yeah, so getting to, to the museum itself, like, uh, what inspired you to uh, put this together? It must have taken quite some time to get this many exhibits and, and things like that uh, and have it on the road like this. I, I started it in 2017, and it's based, I was doing research in organizational psychology on how companies can boost innovation. And one of the biggest obstacles to innovation is, was and still is the fact that people are afraid of making a failing. So both you know, individuals and even organizational teams are afraid of taking meaningful risks where they risk failure. So the museum was born out of that frustration of how can I communicate to, to my clients and through my research that it's really how important it is to take these meaningful risks and how inevitable failure is if we want progress. So the idea, the idea for the Museum of Failure, actually, I, I, I got it. I stole it from another museum. Well, <laughs> it's innovated. <laughs> yeah, you steal stuff from others. Now, I was, I, I was inspired by a, a visit to the uh, in southern and the Mediterranean uh, country of Croatia. They have a museum called the Museum of Broken Relationships, and uh, I just thought that was such an awesome museum. It's so crazy and you know abstract. And I thought if they can do that, I can do a museum of failure. Well, yeah, and I mean, quirky museums can be fun too. One, one we have here in Alberta is the in a small town is the Gopher Museum. We got a little. <laughs> I love it. And uh, love somebody it. decided with a taxidermist uh, bent, they actually had hundreds of these <laughs> gophers, and people created little outfits for them. And oh, all right, all right, I, that that sounds like an awesome museum. The Gopher. Yeah, it draws a lot of visitors to an otherwise kind of insignificant yeah. uh, prairie yeah, town. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I <laughs> but, love it. I didn't even know that existed. That's that's fantastic. Yeah. So, I mean, yours also, as you said, has a bit of an educational component. I mean, failure hey. doesn't have to be considered a negative thing. It's a step. Yeah. Hey, go for a museum. If you're watching this, uh, contact us. We, wanna, we want one of your failed go, uh, taxidermy, taxidermy gophers in our museum in Calgary. 
contact me. <laughs> Keep that in mind. It's the Torrington Gopher Museum. I think it's just a, about an hour and a half out of town while you're out here. So. Sorry, what was your question? I was obsessed with the Gopher Museum. Oh, I already <laughs> forgot. The Gopher Museum is pretty easily <laughs> distracted. But, I, I, uh, well, I guess the, the, I, have to, I, have to, I have to get this in. Uh, the aim of the museum is still to teach, to help us understand and appreciate why we have to accept failure. Because there, yeah. there won't be any innovation. There won't be any progress in any aspect of, 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 of life, business, uh, uh, arts in any way, if we don't accept the, the, the risk of failure uh, when we experiment and explore. So there's a, it's a fun museum, but there's a really serious uh, 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 sort of red thread throughout the entire exhibition. Yeah, I mean, you want to avoid failure. That's always your goal. Yeah. But, but yeah. don't look at a failure as an end. It, it, it could be just considered a step towards something yeah. better. Exactly. Well, great. So, I mean, it's it's set up. It's going to be at South Center. Is this a freestanding thing outside of it, or is there space within the mall that you guys have uh, set up within? Oh, why do you ask such difficult questions? Um, <laughs> okay. It's connected to the mall, and it is accessible through the mall. But it's I I, I haven't seen the 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 venue yet. But it's in the mall. And I'm, I'm pretty sure you can get it through it uh, through the mall. Great. Okay. No, is that I'll a just, good enough answer, or <laughs> it is. I mean, it, people will find it, and I'm certain You'll it'll be. You'll find it. Yeah, yeah. There's big banner. If you're there, you won't miss it. I yeah, and, and my viewers know where South Center Mall is, or most Perfect. of them. You know, it's on on the south side of Calgary, off McLeod Trail. There, it's it's a, a sizable facility. So, I mean, I, I'm looking forward to it. I really will have to make a, a point of getting out there on a day and have it. Okay. So I just want to, because I, you know, I don't want it to be too easy for you. Mm. So when you visit. I'm not going to I'm not going to tell you now but when you visit there are two specific Canadian failures that we added just for Calgary. Uh so your job is to find those. Okay, well yes, I don't want spoilers. We still got to have some discovery there and I, I know <laughs> you have you know a hundred and some out there. We will only cover a few. I mean people want to discover and enjoy them <laughs> in person. Uh so, and that's, uh, it's going to be running for, uh, I believe, a few weeks at least. It's coming in on July 1st, is it? July 1st, and it runs about two months. Oh, two months. Okay. So, I for think the whole... so. Check, check it out. I, I, the, the, the exact when it closes has not been confirmed yet. So Yeah, no, no problem at all. So, uh, so, where can people find information uh, on the museum and, and your, your work then, uh, Dr. West? Yeah, uh, check out museumoffailure.com. And for that's more about the museum in general, and there's some examples of the of the items uh, on display. And then for this, specifically for Calgary, uh, you click on Calgary and you get to the the ticket sales uh, page with more information about opening times and all that. Excellent. Well, thanks for cool. coming on to talk to us about My it. My pleasure. Hey, Dr. West, I was looking forward to it, and you, you didn't disappoint. So uh, <laughs> I look thank you so to much. Checking the museum out, and uh, I hope lots of other folks do as well. Thank you so much.